Hello, and welcome to CFUV's Climate Jam, a series on exploring technologies that can be used to combat global warming. My name is Jason Grenier, and I am producing a series of interviews on solutions to climate change with assistance from the BC Sustainable Energy Association. Their website, bcsea.org. Today, I have on the phone with me Rob Baxter from the Vancouver Renewable Energy Cooperative. They assist building owners by selling and installing affordable renewable energy systems. They have been in the business since 2004 and are the leading installer of grid-tied photovoltaic systems in Metro Vancouver, having installed the first such systems in several municipalities. Since 2010, they have expanded their products and services to include other renewable energy technologies, most notably solar, hot water, and solar pool heating. You can learn more about the Vancouver Renewable Energy Cooperative by going to vrec.ca. Rob, thank you for joining us. Yes, you're welcome. Could you talk about the difference between a solar system that produces electricity and a solar system that heats your hot water tank? Um, yeah, so those are, are two totally different systems, um, and a lot of people do find that confusing. Um, that they're, you know, they're, they're two totally different systems. So the um, the system that produces electricity is also sometimes called a photovoltaic system, and that's generally what people think of when they think of uh, solar panels. Um, so these are solar panels that are made out of uh, silicon. Um, they contain cells which uh, generate electricity. The type that you would use for heating your hot water, there's a, there's a couple different types, but basically they all contain copper tubes which uh, get uh, heated up from uh, the sunlight and then that heat gets transferred to uh, water, also in, in tubes, which then goes through and preheats the, the water for your uh, building. So the, the solar hot water systems are relying uh, on the heat from the sun, whereas the photovoltaic systems actually don't use heat. They use property of the silicon cells to produce electricity. And do solar panels need maintenance? No, the, uh, especially the photovoltaic, the ones that produce electricity, most of them come with a 25-year performance warranty, which means that they will last for at least 25 years, usually longer, and uh, they don't really require any maintenance at all. You may want to clean them once in a while, but the, even the rain will usually take care of that, so that's not even necessary usually. The solar hot water systems require very little maintenance, but there's usually a pump involved with those, so uh, you know, at some point you may need to replace the pump. Okay, so what about people living out, uh, say, Manitoba, where there's a lot of snow and snow falls on these solar panels? Do they still work with the snow on them? Like, does the snow distribute the light even better, or do you got to get that snow off of them? Yeah, if, if the snow is actually covering the panels, then uh, the snow does need to be removed. Uh, the, the panel is usually mounted at an angle, so uh, a lot of times the snow will just naturally uh, start to come off once it starts to warm up. Uh, and as the, the panels start to produce electricity, they actually generate a little bit of heat themselves as well, which helps melt the snow and it does come off. But uh, if you want to speed the process along a little bit, uh, you could uh, remove the snow. Any snow lying on the ground or around the solar panels actually helps to reflect the light onto them and increases the production. But yeah, you don't want snow actually on the panels themselves blocking the sunlight. Okay. Uh, here's a, a little example. Um, uh, I, you know, like I volunteer at CFUV, uh, but I do have at my regular employment, uh, I have a, a supervisor uh, that wants to install a solar hot water system on his home. However, he's on the fence um, about following through with it. You know, he calculated what it would cost to install and how long it would take to pay for itself and uh, I've tried to convince him to uh, go through with it. Um, what reasons would you give to encourage people to adopt solar energy? Um, well, the problem with solar energy is it does have um, an upfront cost uh, which, can, which can be fairly high. 
And uh, the other issue is that we have some of the cheapest energy in the world here in BC. Uh, so that's why people are usually reluctant. Um, but you have to think more from a long term. Once you've installed the system, the energy is basically free. Um, and as I've just mentioned, there's very little maintenance with these systems. So basically, you're getting free energy from them from that point on. And the other thing is, even though our energy is quite uh, inexpensive right now, it's not going to stay that way. I mean, we've seen the price of natural gas come down, which is what a lot of people use for heating water over the last few years, but it's not likely to stay down. It's probably going to go up, and uh, we've, we've heard a lot of stories recently, too, about the price of electricity uh, going up as well uh, because of some of the problems that BC Hydro faces. Um, so even though it you know may appear like there's a long payback for these systems right now, that's going to change as energy prices go up. And, of course, the other big advantage to these systems is you're producing clean energy. You know, if you're burning natural gas to heat your water, you're uh, releasing uh, greenhouse gas emissions into the air. Um, even though natural gas burns cleaner than some of the other fossil fuels, there's also other uh, toxic air pollutants that are associated with it. And, of course, with solar, you have none of those, none of that pollution. If you're heating your hot water or you're, you're using electricity and other things, um, our Electricity in BC is relatively clean, but we still get about 10 to 15 percent, maybe even sometimes more of it from burning fossil fuels. So there's all the pollution associated with that. Um, you're also uh, using the energy right where you need it, so you don't have to worry about transmission lines or pipelines that are moving the energy from one place to another. So that's another advantage to uh, using solar energy. Yeah, yeah. There's the uh, there's the moral issue, I guess. That I think I don't know if people. Um, take it to perspective either. But um, uh, now, the Climate Challenge a book authored by Guy Duncy states that if 100 million U.S. rooftops had a 5 kilowatt solar PV system, they would generate 900 terawatt hours of electricity a year, meeting 23% of the U.S. electrical demand. Such a large scale, I would think, uh, uh, like such a large scale project like that, I think would lower the prices of solar panels. What is the price of a five kilowatt solar PV system today? And what do you think the cost could be if the government went ahead with such a project? Well, the, the cost right now uh, would be uh, $20,000, maybe even less. Um, for um, complete installation of the system. And that, that's quite a bit less than it has been in the past. So, you know, a few years ago, you probably would have paid, uh, well, when we started, which was nine years ago, you probably would have paid $50,000 for that system. So it's already come down quite a bit. And then, of course, if they were government incentives, then it would come down even more, especially on, on uh, that sort of scale. So we've already seen this, the price of solar panels come down quite a bit just because in so many other places in the world, they are producing and using a lot of them. And I read uh, on your website the uh, seven years of 100% solar energy at a North Vancouver home. Uh, that, that was a story uh, on your uh, Vancouver Renewable Energy website. And uh, I really liked it. But the story mentioned that the owner of the home had to make some behavior changes. Uh, could you expand on that? Well, I, I think he's just really diligent about watching how he uses electricity. So, you know, if he's uh, not in a room, he'll shut his, his lights off. If he's not using a computer or some other appliance, he'll turn it off. And so it's those, those uh, behavior changes, which are pretty simple, but they can add up. Before he installed the solar panels, he reduced his electrical consumption by 70%, and that was through behavior changes, like I just mentioned, but also you know, by replacing light bulbs with more energy-efficient options, replacing some of his appliances with more energy-efficient options as well. Oh, okay. So basically, solar panels sound like they're part of a solution, but they're not the complete solution at the moment anyways. Is that correct? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I would say definitely that they're part of the solution, but I think part of the solution also has to be a reduction in consumption and becoming more energy efficient. You know, solar panels are great because they produce free energy after they're manufactured and installed, but they do require energy to manufacture them. They do require energy to install them. So I don't think we can rely on them to completely solve all of our problems. I think we also need to reduce consumption and become more efficient. Okay. Now, I just want to do a little bit of math here. I live in a condo, so I asked my uncle. He lives in a home, two people in the home. They use about 1,000 uh, kilowatt hours a month 
if they had installed a five kilowatt solar PV system, what would be the net energy that they would need still from BC Hydro or would they need any for, at all? Yeah, that system would supply about half of their needs probably. Okay, so does when you say a five kilowatt PV system, does that produce five kilowatts per hour or per day or how? what does that mean? <laughs> Yeah, so it, it's yeah, it's a bit confusing because that uh, is what it produces under standard test conditions. So there's a system they use to rate panels based on certain temperatures and um, amount of sunlight and angle. Most of the time, the system is going to be producing less than that, and there are some times it will actually produce more than that. So here in Vancouver, on average, a 5-kilowatt system would produce 18, 18 uh, kilowatt hours per day on average. Another quick rule of thumb is just to look at the annual production from it. So that system on a- annually would produce over 5 megawatt hours. Okay, okay. So 17 to 18 kilowatt hours per day, you said? On average, yeah. On so average. Of course, during the summer it's going to produce more, during the winter less, but that would be the average. And then in uh, down south, say in California, it would be even... An even better idea to use solar panels down in, uh, say, the desert of uh, California? Yeah. 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 If, where they get more sun, they're going to get more better production. You're going to lose a little bit because of the heat. The panels actually work better in cooler weather. But overall, you're going to get more because of there's, there's more sun. Okay. i just ask you just one more question. What the uh, future for solar panels is. Is there new technologies coming out? You know, can we look forward to even more efficient solar panels? Certainly, there are a bunch of different projects in research stages that promise more efficient solar panels. It's hard to know which one of those will come to be commercially available. I've been in the business for over 10 years. I've heard a lot of different projects that are in the research stage and never seem to be to come out to be commercially available. So it's hard to say which one, but there's so many that are being researched right now. I'm sure some of them will come out and make solar panels more efficient. The prices of panels have come down quite a bit in the last 10 years, so uh, they seem to be leveling out now, but um, I think relative to energy, other energy prices which are, are going up, solar panels will continue to, to be a, a better option, and we'll see more and more of them being installed. Right. Excellent. Well, that sounds good, and um, is there any websites or anything you would like to say just to add to this conversation, anything interesting um, on the horizon? Well, I always like to remind people that the country that has the largest installed base of solar panels or the, you know, what generates the largest percentage of electricity from solar is Germany, and that most of Germany actually gets less sunlight than we do here on the coast, on BC's coast, so certainly... There is potential for solar energy in BC. As far as websites, of course, um, our website, vrec.ca, has more information about solar energy systems. And the BC uh, Sustainable Energy Association website, bcsea.org, also has some good information. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I read about uh, Germany, and I know that they're actually uh, north of uh, Montreal on, Mm -hmm. on the map. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you for joining me. Okay, thank you.